Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today I will create another abstract watercolor journal spread. But first of all, I want to show you how my color palette sketchbook is working because I get a lot of questions about this. I'm using um, this is my inspiration from Anne Kresge. I hope I'm pronouncing this right. I love the colors she has used in this illustration. And this is my sketchbook. I used one from Arteza because I have a bunch of them and I don't really like them for painting. So I use them just as a sketchbook. And I'm adding all the color schemes I like in here. Usually I try to write the names of the paints um, onto the page, but sometimes I forget this. This is my um, color palette of my watercolors that I'm using, so I can quickly decide which is the right color. And what I want to say is I often forget to write down the color names after everything is dry, and that's a little bit difficult then, or it's harder to figure out which color it was. So. Um, I have to remind myself to always note this down. I'm using a stamp from my Swatch It stamp set to make a little swatch grid at the bottom of the page and I usually use the right side um, for the color scheme and the left page to try out if it's the right color that I've picked. In case you want to skip this step and jump directly into the painting process. I will make a timestamp in the video description so you don't have to to search for it. I'm starting out with the Naples yellow. I put it directly on the right side because I'm pretty sure that this is the right color. Um, it's one of my favorite colors. It's such a pretty yellow. It's not too intense and it's not too muddy. So I really love this one. And what I also like about this color is that it has a really good flow. The Naples yellow I'm using is from White Nights. This is an Opera Rose. I believe it's from Rosa Gallery. And I also was 100% sure that this is the right color. And also m when I mix both together, um, I get the pinkish tone that is on the illustration that I'm using for reference. I'm finding all my ideas online, on Instagram, on Pinterest, in books. I have a lot of art books to look at or also in um, picture books with flowers, landscapes, etc. And also in magazines. I had a subscription to a photo magazine years ago and I have a lot of them laying around and I still flip through them for reference, for drawing, and also for color inspiration. My watercolor palette is completely messy, so I mixed this orangey pinkish tone on the left page. There is a touch of violet in the illustration. It's not much, and I'm not sure which one I want to grab. And this is the cobalt violet, and I haven't wet it before, so it's really light at the moment. It's a bit of a, a special color because it's granulating and very soft, and I haven't used it much. Um, but I really like how it looks when it's dry. The pink in the illustration had also some red in it, and the red I'm picking here is the matter red from Van Gogh. And there was some really, really dark brown. And the brown I'm using here, I have no idea which name it is, but I believe it's from a Mijello Mission Gold palette. And I have to go to this palette and look for the number of the color. Could be a Van Dyke brown maybe, but I'm not sure.
What I also do if I have a certain artwork where I like the color combination, I also try to keep the balance of the amount of the color that is on the painting. So there was a lot of this mixed pink and a lot of the brown and so I try to to do this with the color palette in my sketchbook too because if I change the amount of color of each a single color then the color palette looks totally different. Here I'm searching for the right violet and I'm picking I believe it's a quinacridone lilac or so. I will come back at the end of this process and add the cobalt violet because I decided I like that more with this color palette. The turquoise I've used here is from Rosa Gallery. It's one of my favorite colors and it's already empty. I'm glad I bought a second set of their paints so I have one full pen left. Uh, Rosa Gallery is from the Ukraine and they make really beautiful watercolors. Well, they call it artist grade on Amazon, but I would say these are student grade, but they are really good quality and they come in a set with a metallic uh, box and that's what I like. And here I mix the Naples yellow with the turquoise to get that greenish tone. And I think they are about 36 euros on Amazon, the whole color palette with, I am not sure, I believe there were 36 colors, no, or 28, but full pens, so something like that. And I'm really loving this watercolor palette. But the palette I'm using is a mix of different brands. I just tried out several ones and picked out my favorites. Here I'm going over the brown again because in the illustration it's pretty pretty dark. And I also add a touch of the turquoise again because it dries very light. And I just want to give you a quick view on the illustration again. I just can lay it down because of the wet paint underneath. And here you can see I think I, um, I found the most colors. And now I will make my spread with this color scheme. But first I'm adding that cobalt violet because I really like this. It's, I think it looks much better than the quinacridone lilac and when everything is dry I would just um, strike it out. Again I'm working in the watercolor journal from Kunst und Papier. It's a nice journal to play. It's not the best watercolor paper but uh, I believe it's difficult to get a good watercolor sketchbook and if you have one I have some good ones. Um, I'm always really afraid to ruin them. So this is more of a messy and experimental sketchbook and um, if I like a combination then I can recreate something something similar in my better art journal if I want to. But maybe I would use these kind of spreads to make a painting from. I'm doing the same that I did the last weeks. I'm playing with squares this time and just put the colors next to each other and I'm connecting them so they are um, floating into each other and the turquoise is a color with a very high flow and it's it bleeds almost into everything. I'm having some big puddles here and I would just soak them up with a damp brush.
that's not black it just looks like black but it's the dark brown and the turquoise is already um, floating into uh, this brown square and I really like how this turned out I always tell that this is something you can do when there is not much time for creating because it's kind of a recipe process. You start with the watercolors and then you go in with the watercolor pencils and with the crayons and maybe add some stamping and f to finish it up with some highlights. And that's easy to do because if you know the process, you don't have to think too much. You just can relax and play. And that's what I like to do. I uh, recorded this page this morning and <laughs> that's usually not what I'm doing. I usually have the videos recorded some days before I upload them. But I couldn't find time during the past weeks so I just decided instead of posting no video I will um, take some time in the morning for creating this page and then I have a video and I also had a lot of fun making it and it was very relaxing The brush I'm using here is in Germany called a French watercolor brush. I have no idea how it's called in English, maybe a mop brush, but I am not sure. I really like this brush because it takes such a big amount of water and paint and that's really nice to play with. I'm feeling that I should have used more red because the turquoise is so dominant at the top. But well, that's how such a page goes. I will make my last square in the matte red. Um, but I am really afraid that I will touch the brown and then everything will become brown and muddy. So I will um, soak up some of the brown color before I um, build the contact between the two squares. Now I'm going in with my Derwent Inktense pencils. I have some of the Inktense here and some of the Graphite Tint. They are similar, just that the Graphite Tint have more of a graphite look and not the look of colored pencils. I'm just making some scribbly lines and marks right onto my page. I'm holding my pencil at the very end, so I am not going for perfect uh, shapes. I just play a bit more wild, I feel, if I touch or if I hold the pencil not um, too close to the tip. What I also like is to use the wet paint and just um, draw it out with the pencil.
now it's time that I will set this aside and let it dry before I keep on working. It's not 100% dry, but I want to um, finish this page because I have to make my voice over and upload the video. So I already started stamping in the areas that were already dry and I'm using the little rainbows from the Pencil Marks stamp set. And the ink I'm using, I believe it's the Fuchsia ink from Stay Zone. I think everything looks still boring, so I keep on stamping a bit texture and here I'm using a background stamp or texture stamp from the Mixed Media Mark stamp set with a teal color. To add kind of a connection to some of the squares, I'm using my sewing borders and I'm using a dark brown ink. I believe it's called Ganache from Stay Zone and it's a brand new ink pad and it's really, really juicy. I let this dry completely now before I am going in with the crayons and I am making some messy marks all around and over my page and this is what I feel um, finishes it up or makes it much more interesting. And of course I'm picking colors that are matching my color theme.
Finally, I'm going in with the Posca paint pens and here I'm having a neon pink and it's the only neon pink I have um, and his, it has a very big chisel tip and so it's really hard to make small marks or little dots. And I'm also using the white pen, Posca pen, to make some marks. My plan was to now go in with the white crayon and make some highlights, but then I decided I want to try out my new white drawing ink. I just purchased some of these inks because I already had some and I really like them. And they were on sale, so I decided to make my collection a little bit bigger. And I am not sure if this is a very opaque ink and I just want to try it out. It's a bit um, difficult because I had to shake it because of the white pigment and if you shake it you get a lot of these air bubbles and then it's really hard to get the ink completely on your dip pen. The dip pen that I'm using is not a special one it was the cheapest set I could find in my online art supply store. I will um, try to remember and put the name of the set in the video description. It came with two pen holders and I believe there are 10 different dip pens inside. No splatters today, but I will add some text to the bottom and I want to use a different um, stamp set for text and I searched through my stash from the old rubber dance stamps and I found this one. It says imagination is the eye of the soul from Joseph Joubert or so. And I have to figure out which stamp set this is and I hope I still have it in the store. That's my page for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope we will see us next time. Have a wonderful rest of the week. Bye!